ISRO has tweeted a latest update on Chandrayaan 3. Chandrayaan 3 mission uh, updates coming in. Here are the first observations from the chest payload on board the Vikram lander chest uh, that is Chandrayaan surface thermophysical experiment measures the temperature profile of the lunar topsoil around the pole to understand the thermal behavior of the moon's surface. It has a temperature probe equipped with a control penetration mechanism capable of reaching a depth of 10 centimeters beneath the surface. The probe is fitted with 10 individual temperature sensors. A presented graph illustrates the temperature variations of the lunar surface near depth at various depths as recorded during the probe's penetration. This is the first such profile for the lunar south pole. Detailed observations are underway. The payload is developed by a team led by the Space Physics Laboratory. Uh, VSCSC uh, and in collaboration with PRL Ahmedabad as well. So already latest observations, more latest observations coming in. We're getting an understanding of the South Pole temperature of the Moon, Group Captain Jha. Absolutely. Look, uh, uh, the lander has got four uh, equipment. One is that it has got the chest, what you have mentioned. It is going to make the thermal mapping of the surface on the South Pole. On in and in around the equator, uh, US size told us much, much earlier, decades earlier, that the temperature in the daytime goes to, you know, plus 125, plus, uh, in the range of 125 plus, and in the nighttime, it goes to about minus 235. That we know on the equator, in and around equator. But what happens on the South Pole? Uh, there, the temperature may not rise to that uh, type of because the sun ray is coming at a slant. There is no atmosphere, of course. So, Chandrayaan 3, that chase, is going to give us a thermal mapping, which is absolutely original. It might not be known to the others. It could be entirely different type of map that others had imagined earlier. ISO will be getting for the first time. Other than this, the Rambha LP language uh, probe that is there, that is going to tell us what are those wandering molecules, ionized molecules, ionized plasma molecules, which is wandering around the surface that will uh, tell us the story. And ILSA will also tell you the story that what type of uh, seismic activity is going on there on the South Pole. It may not be the seismic activity of the moon quake. It may not be the, the you know, the, all those uh, uh, earlier in the past that the, uh, the balls had been there on the surface. It may not be those, but anything, any impact that happens or any rumbling that happens underneath. So that would be known by the, the ILSA, that is the uh, seismic activity going down. And one more important, the last thing, is that it has got a laser reflectometer. And that laser reflectometer will tell us exactly how much is the distance from the uh, uh, from the moon's surface of Earth, and you know everyone has been telling us that moon is going away from us by one inch every year. Is that one inch really the correct? Is it the real figure to be trusted? That reflectometer, laser reflectometer, will tell us the story over a long time as compared to the Earth's distance as well as the other celestial body. So this, these are the equipment with the uh, uh, with the lander. And last but not the least, even that the propulsion module, what is right now orbiting around the moon, that also has got, a, got an equipment which will make the thermal mapping in the NIR section, near uh, infrared uh, section, to give us how the Earth's atmosphere has got the heat mapping, whether it is really that climate changes, what is happening in the upper atmosphere, whether it is that, uh, you know, the heat trapping going to be there with those uh, molecules, uh, which can cause that greenhouse effects. So those stories also will be told for, for the Earth, as well as it may also look in the coming years, the, the distant uh, uh, solar system, uh, distant uh, stellar, stellar system because there is any other inhabitable inhabitable uh, planet in the cosmos anywhere we need. Let me Sorry, also Anish. take that to uh, Manish Purohit. Uh, Manish Purohit, uh, already uh, we are of course getting uh, information coming in and you know this is perhaps the first such chase reading uh, and an in-depth temperature analysis of the south pole of the moon uh, ever. So you know clearly uh, history uh, continues from Team Istro. See, actually, uh, studying the South Pole or South Pole region is important because uh, we can say that uh, getting depths 
of what is stored there in the form of information that we can have our hands on. Just if you look at that graph, you can put that graph on the screen and for the viewers to watch, you can see that within a difference of just 10 centimeter, the lunar regolith is experiencing a temperature difference of around 60 to 70 degrees centigrade. You can see that top layer is reading somewhere around 60, while at the depth of around 8 to 9 centimeter, it is going to minus 10. Now you just think about it, at a difference of just 10 centimeters, there's a, it's a big thing. It's 70, 70 degree difference in the temperature is something big. So what actually happens there? That's why we have to study it because uh, moon can be referred as a archive, a museum of our history. The history which will give us the information that how earth was formed. See, actually, uh, if you go back and look at the beginning, when we were a big gas nebula, when uh, it was like, you know, the solar system was de deciding that what all he has to, it has to make and what are different planets, it will be there, how the sun has to be. Information of, from that particular point till the point we have reached here over these few uh, billion years, we have to understand that part and for that we needed something very pristine and right now our lander and rover are in that particular reason which we can call it's very pristine for us to understand what exactly the geological history of moon is because geological history of moon will directly lead us to the geological history of earth so what are the experiments we are doing they all have big scientific applications if we talk about ilsa so nasa has done elaborate studies about lunar quakes elaborate in apollo missions they have flown many seismometers but all of them were in and around the equatorial part we are the first one to put an, a seismometer in the south polar region and that too it is highly sensitive, it is so sensitive that even a meteorite striking the surface of the moon will get itself registered even it is on the other side. So it's very very sensitive. Now regarding the moon quakes, uh, moon is supposed to be thousand times much quieter than earth because we have uh, tectonic movements. But there is a speculation that lunar quakes may not be because of the movement of the plates. It may be something else. It may be some tidal effect. So we have to get more details about it because that's our next place where we are going to put our astronaut, we are going to put our base camp there because we are planning to use moon for our next jump into the interplanetary exploration. So this is important. And if you have to understand a locality and a local environment of some place where we have to put our experimental setup, our base camp, we are planning that okay, there will be more frequent uh, visits and tours to that particular location. So we have to understand how the high energy particles coming from the sun, because we have atmosphere, our atmosphere protects us from all those high energy particles and high energy radiations, but there is nothing on the moon to protect it from. So. How the plasma thing happens, what is the dynamics of it, how it varies over the duration of those 14 days when sun is shining and when there is no sun, what, sun, what happens to those things. So we have to understand these, these are the fine little details that we have to understand because the aim is that place will be kind of inhabited by human in the coming future. So we have to understand every fine print of it regarding the meteorites and the lunar sample for the water and all. See, meteorites are the main basic source of water, not only on moon, but most of it on earth, most of it, maybe 99% of it is from the meteorites. We, we didn't have water, we got all our water from the meteorites. So meteorites are the biggest source of water and organic material, how the life started on earth. So we can say that our life, the life on earth started with those basic components which were delivered to us through these meteorites or asteroids that, that were striking the earth. So if we get our hold on those places where we know that meteorites have uh, struck moon and really hard and they have delivered water there, there might be a possibility because if those areas are permanently shadowed and there has been no interference of any high radio energy radiation or high energy particles from the sun or any other place, so we may get some surprises also. So, and if you look at the southern polar region, so southern polar region is very heavily disturbed by these meteorites. The, the count runs in lakhs. There are a large number of them and at the exactly at the southern pole, exactly at the southern pole, the crater because of those impacts is around 12 kilometers deep. So that's why, that's why the whole focus, everything completely, totally, all the resources have been concentrated on exploration of that part. Now a question may be why not the northern polar region? Why not? Why only southern polar? Because northern pole is not that much affected by all these impacts. Crater count is less. It is relatively smoother surface if you compare to the southern polar region of the moon. That's why even NASA, ESA, Japan Space, 
Roscosmos, ISRO, China, everyone wants to go to the Southern Polar Region and we are the first one who are conducting the experiments and getting some good insights. No doubt. Uh, Vikram Sudhakar, let me uh, quickly draw you in here now. There's a lot more that, of course, will, uh, will be gathered in the days ahead. Uh, but it's been barely uh, 72 hours and already the kind of information coming in, the pictures, the imagery. What is your take on that, Wing Commander Sudhakar? Uh, I am really not a selfie kind of a person. So, uh, you know, the selfies that the Pagyan and uh, the Vikram landers are taking, uh, you know, good luck and, and let's cherish those. So keeping that aside, the idea is not to take selfies. The idea is not to say that I landed there. It's, it's a far more bigger game that we're going to get involved in. And the idea of this mission is to look for rare earth minerals. And rare earth minerals, which are going to be applied in future electronics, future defense technologies, green <laughs> energy, medical, building of future far more efficient batteries, glass, ceramics, and so on and so forth. Okay, so uh, what are these, you know, general uh, rare earth uh, uh, minerals that we are talking about? If we, if, if we actually look at that, we're talking about uh, plagioclase, we're talking about uh, pyroxenes, we talk about olivine, we're talking about ferret, we are talking about tantalites, and these are the kind of, you know, few rare earth minerals apart from helium-3, which is considered to be a very, very clean fuel for the future fusion reactors. Now, if future fusion reactors have to be smaller, you know, which will actually enable uh, interstellar planetary missions, which will give us perennial source of energy from within, you know, it's exactly the process that happens inside the sun. So if we can replicate that and make these reactors smaller, and that's where the game is. And to make all these things, we need not only the rare earth minerals, we also need helium-3. So the Pragyan rover in its initial phase is looking for evidences of the lunar regolith. The lunar regolith, regolith which is a fine dust particle, which uh, you know is thought to have abundance of helium-3, though in, in, in a far more diluted condition, you know, we are going to explore there. And countries, you know, we can't rest on America uh, to uh, tell you what it uh, fits from the lunar mission because they are only going to say what it suits them. You need to dirty your hands on the lunar surface, find it out for yourself, what is available, how it can be used, and that's how you are going to fuel and feed the next generation of technologies that are going to take birth from the womb of the Indian intellectual's uh, mind. That's the game that Pragyan is involved in. And uh, it's far too early to say where it has reached, how much it has reached, but I'm pretty sure the ISRO scientists are in the same game and they have equipped with enough sensors to collect enough uh, samples out of it. So we will have to follow this mission with a series of missions almost, you know, if, if I would have my say, I would want a mission every quarter because we know how to land there. Now it's about replicating this landing every quarter. Let's share that landing every quarter. Bring in tons of samples from there. Find out a cheap, cheap method to extract and mine there. You know, that's where robotics is going to play a big part. It's not the humans who are going to colonize moons. It's the, the robots that you're going to conceive from here who are going to be there because you don't need oxygen for them. You don't need to set up hospitals for them. You don't need to set up entertainment systems for them. They will work relentlessly. So that's the revolution that India needs to usher in and, you know, bring these bots onto the lunar surface, look at mining at a scale, get these products that are required, which will revolutionize it. When people talk about, you know, how does it matter to a common man? It does matter because you are going to get sophisticated medical treatments out of that. You are going to get sophisticated batteries out of that, which will charge your mobile phones. It will charge your uh, everything in your home. You will lead a far more energy efficient life. You will destroy the environment less. The rare earth minerals, please understand, when you do mining in the earth, you devastate the environment here. But moon, there's nothing of that sort that happens. So you're going to get everything clean. That's the game that Vikram Landa and Pragyan are in, and that's probably what is through as sent this mission for the best of my ability because I'm, I have no insight into what Israel's design plans are. But if that were the design plans, we need to get this going in scale. And that's 
that's what is going to usher in a new era of competition between even the United States, the Russia, uh, and the Chinese. Because they're not going to allow you to do that mining because then it becomes like you're going to drop boundaries there. Who's going to own what? How is it going to be decided? And please understand if China is going to set up a base by 2027 there, you can't believe that country. It doesn't leave a, a, a piece of land wherein a blade of grass doesn't grow on earth. And for a land, a piece of land that is there in the moon, which is so infested with rare earth materials, which are so expensive to get, which is so important for our uh, uh, technology growth on earth, uh, they're not going to let you be so free. So that's why we cannot rest. I've been continuously stressing for the last week or so. We cannot rest the laurels, rest on the laurels of what Chandrayaan 3 has uh, accomplished. We need to build on them. We need to get more hungry. Uh, it's like Ravi Shastri telling on TV, telling that if you have a hundred, take a fresh gut. You know, go for two hundred, go for three hundred, and that's what India needs to do today. And 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 we need to mine these um, uh, rare earth uh, materials, and then um, you know, uh, uh, bring in new technologies. You know, the robotics, the three D printing technologies, which are actually going to set up uh, new systems there on uh, an alien planet. That's what I see the future as, and that's where India needs to put its money on. Right. Uh, is that something you uh, you agree with, uh, Arjun? Uh, because uh, at the end of the day, of course, uh, uh, there is very, very limited uh, information, of course, that has already come in. But as I said, it's been barely 72 hours. You know, so this is great information and, you know, pictures and data and temperature readings already uh, showing us about, you know, as, as, as the saying goes, ki ye to trailer hai. Abhi puri picture baki hai. It's just giving us a glimpse of what all is to come, Arjun. Gulia. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, because the thing is, uh, please be sure of one thing that ISRO may not release uh, the, all the information if they think that it is it is uh, sensitive to the national, basically national uh, strategy, like, like Sudhakaran said. Right? Because in the South Pole region is pretty different from the equatorial region where NASA have already, already went. Because NASA, if they went there, they have already the, 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 the basically the plethora of moon rocks already in the laboratory. They have already known what is the part of that regolith. But the moon, but the South Pole is completely different from that. Because the South Pole does not receive sunlight at all. So it is very much uh, well placed to preserve the knowledge of the uh, initial, earlier part of the solar system as well as the water, which is the main reason why we are going to the South Pole. So what all we have gotten so far, it is only the trailer because the, the reading from the spectrometers from the Pragyan rover, it, it, they are not out, uh, out now. We don't know what all elements are there. We don't know what is the mineral composition of there. That is something that Pragyan rover is going to tell us. Similarly, the Vikram lander also have certain uh, equipments on it, like the seismograph. They, it, it, it will also basically the, like Manish said, they, they, the reason why moon quakes happen, it is very much different from what is there on Earth, right? Because moon's, uh, moon's core is not as molten as Earth's core. If there is a meteor striking on the uh, back side of the moon, the vibrations do travel to the front side, right? And that is the reason that what is the intensity of those moon quakes, how frequent they happen, these kind of information is going to help us while designing the uh, the uh, station on the moon which is going to be uh, there in NASA's Artemis mission and the uh, and India is also part of the Artemis Accords. So yeah, so a lot of information that is going to come from this Chandrayaan-3 mission is going to shape the future missions of the moon, not only from India, but from all over the world. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.